Shout it loud, hallelujah. Turn to somebody now. In a first class intercessory prayers to open up this year's first Wednesday service. Pray for that person with all your heart. And let the person pray for you with all his or her heart. As you engage in this intercession, the Lord your God whom you serve shall close the mouth of every lion backing against you. So every power monitoring your destiny for evil. Die! In the name of Jesus. Pray for that person. Deal with that power completely now. In Jesus' name we pray. Go to the second person. Every night meeting, someone to frustrate you. Scatter. Open your mouth and pray for a friend in the name of Jesus. Something is happening already. Open your mouth in intercession. In Jesus' name we pray. Go to a third person. Every enchanter and diviner against your glory. Scatter. Scatter the diviner and the enchanters. Masepante Kayaba Riboka Sampande Kata E Jesus them we pray. Look for another person again. Look for another person. Oh God of Elijah Allah He support his adversaries in the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and declare. Let the adversaries be disappointed. Ah, 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 ah. Just. In Jesus' name we pray. Look for yet another person. Every Nebuchadnezzar. Plotting to disgrace the name of your God. Can you shout that loud and clear? Da! In the name of Jesus. Yes. Bakate Satanda Kaya Bushenda Rabu Kantia. Disgrace in Nebuchadnezzar. In Jesus' name we pray. Go to another person, beloved. Every bad news assigned against your life be cancelled by fire. In the name of Jesus, cancel the bad news. Aha, 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 In Jesus' name we pray. Now look for somebody else. That's the last person you are praying for. Pray for that person with fire and with thunder. Say, my friend, you will not die before your glory appears. In the name of Jesus. Open your mouth and decline. My friend, you will not die before your glory appears. Mapia Rikasetan Dayaba. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank that your friend. Thank your friend. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Father, we thank you for this time before you. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Thank you for this first meeting in the year. Where is it here? We praise your name for being our glory and the lift of our head. 
We thank you for journey mercies. We thank you for protection. We thank you for health. We thank you for what you have been in our lives. We give you all the glory, all the honor, and all the adoration. Accept our thanks in the name of Jesus. Thank you because your name is the name that is above all names. We give you praise, O Lord. Accept our thanks in Jesus' name. Father, we are in another year. A year of new beginnings for your people. Father, we pray that every old pattern that has held us down will be broken to pieces in the name of Jesus. Any long-standing challenge facing our lives, we bury them tonight in the name of Jesus. Whether you need to send your angels to the waters, or into the forest, or into the heavens, or underneath the ground, wherever you need to send them, O Lord, send them there for your people to possess their possession. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Heavenly Father. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. Let's have a seat. God bless you. Say what I'm going to say now after me. Say, my father, repair me for breakthroughs. Can I hear you say that one? Can you say it again? That's our topic this evening. And that's going to form the basis of our prayers. My father, repair me for breakthroughs. My father, repair me for breakthroughs. Question number one. What does it mean to repair? To repair means to correct. It means to fix something that is spoiled. It means to heal. It means to refurbish. To repair means to improve or to overhaul, to rebuild or to rectify, to renovate. That's what it means to repair. To repair is to rectify. That is question number one. Question number two. What do we need for God to repair in our lives? This is why you have to listen to me very carefully in this first meeting. By birth, by foundation, by position, by social life, by environment, many of us are already positioned against our breakthrough. Many have taken a position that will not help their lives at all if they just go on that way. There are some powers which duty it is to rearrange human beings to, to places where they cannot be blessed. And they are highly, highly underlined, highly effective. Highly effective. They have succeeded in turning man upside down. This is the reason why the enemy sometimes mock our prayers and laugh at us. Because he sees that we are in the wrong position. So a lot of people are already positioned against their breakthroughs. Unless a divine repair takes place, God cannot build on that foundation that is supplied. And therefore in the scriptures, Please listen very carefully. Before a child of destiny is to be born, Jehovah will have stepped in and said, This shall be his name. You shall deliver a son, and you shall call his name Jesus. For he shall deliver his people from all their sins. He said this before the pregnancy even took place. The same thing with Zechariah. So he shall deliver his son. He shall be great before the Lord. Many shall rejoice at his birth. He shall go before him in the spirit and power of Elijah. He shall drink neither one nor struck drink. He shall turn the house of the fathers of the children. He shall call his name John. God already stepped in to name them before they were born. Why does he do that? It's because that name you are given can reposition you for failure. Immediately you are given that name. 
Perhaps you are here tonight. Is the enemy that gave you your name? You need to really pray hard because that name is not, enough to position you for terrible things. And therefore, men of destiny in the Bible, God always moved in to repair them so that He can prepare them for the breakthroughs they need. Many of us need to cry to the heavens here tonight. Say, my Father, repair my defenseless head. Because there was a time that head was defenseless. And the enemy had rearranged. This is a year of new beginnings. And the Lord has wished to bless His people. He wants to bless. He wants to pour out. The only problem is the vessel to receive His blessings. If you grab somebody who is in the nursery class, and they are still teaching the person, A for apple, B for ball, C, D, that's what the person is still learning. All of a sudden, you grab the person from the nursery school, and they say, they say that they want professors in the University of Lagos, so you say the boy should apply. That boy will have serious foundational problem because the foundation he has is not big enough to carry what he wants. The fact that God opens the window of heaven and pours out blessings doesn't mean that you will receive them if the foundation is weak. This is the blunt truth. Anytime we say, Oh, that thou will have rain the heavens and thou will have come down and the mountains will flee from before you, God drains the heaven, pours out blessings. The sad thing is that only few take the blessing. And one of the saddest moments of my own life is when we come to a meeting like this. And Gio says, open your mouth and pray. And begin to pray. And an angel comes out. Boom, lands like this. And begin goes to go from row to row. Gets to row, looks, looks at this person praying. Goes to the next one. Goes to the next one. A whole row sometimes, it doesn't give anybody anything. Then goes to the next row, gives to one person. Looks around again. Misses four rows. Goes again. And gives to one person. And boom, they have gathered again. They are ready to go. They are finished. And there are thousands praying. It's very sad for a minister. I pray that before you leave this place tonight, whatever will make the angel of God to avoid you will be buried here tonight. It shall be buried 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 tonight. In the name of Jesus. Abraham was a man that is supposed to be great and he's still very, very great. Abraham would have died as a heathen in a foreign land without anybody knowing his name if he had remained in his father's house. By foundation, Abraham would not have been blessed. So God, the divine repairer, had to bring him out of that place so that he can be blessed. Until many of us depart from the tent of our father's house, having breakthrough will be impossible. In Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, Genesis chapter 12, verse 1, we begin to read this interesting episode. Genesis 12, 1. Now the Lord has said unto Abraham, Get thee out of thy country, number one, and from thy kingdom, number two, from thy father's house, number three, and unto a land that I will show thee. It is after he has done that that number two will happen. And I will make of thee a great nation. And I will bless thee and make thy name great. And thou shalt be a blessing. But the foundation of his father's house and the foundation of Abraham's life cannot carry the breakthrough of greatness unless the repairer moved in and moved the person out. There are some cities in this Nigeria, the indigenous of that place, they don't prosper within their town unless they go out. There is a spirit there that pollutes the life of the indigenous. I pray that tonight, if your place of birth has put a rope on your neck and they have tied you down, the rope shall catch fire. And you shall be set loose. In the name of Jesus. Verse 4. So Abraham departed, as the Lord had spoken unto him, and Lot went with him. Another mistake. Not only that one. Abraham carried his father along, which was contrary to the instructions. 
And until Lot departed from him, and until Abraham's father died, Abraham did not make progress. Because he left his foundational bondage, but he carried the bondage along. And that gave him serious trouble. And that gave him serious stress. In Acts chapter 7, I read again from verse 2. Acts 7, we are taking Abraham to start with. So you know how to cry to the great prayer tonight. Acts chapter 7, verse 2. And he said, Men, brethren, and fathers, hearken. The God of glory appeared unto our father Abraham when he was in Mesopotamia before he dwelt in Aaron. And said unto him, Get thee out of thy country and from thy kindred and come to the land which I shall show thee. Then came he out of the land of the Chaldeans and dwelt in Aaron. And from thence, when his father was dead, he removed him into this land wherein ye now dwell. Until the father of Abraham that he carried along died, until Lot was separated, he made no progress. I pray that every extra luggage in your hand that is preventing the full manifestation of the greatness of God upon your life, that you shall drop them tonight. In the name of Jesus. Gideon was supposed to be a very great man, but he needed some repairs. And until those repairs were done, he never moved, moved forward. In Judges chapter 6, verse 25. Judges chapter 6, verse 25. And it came to pass the same night that the Lord said unto him, Take thy father's young bullock, even the second bullock of seven years old, and throw down the altar of Baal that thy father had, and cut down the grove that is by it. And then build an altar unto the Lord thy God upon the top of this rock. Until Gideon had done that, he couldn't fulfill what God wanted him to fulfill. And this is a very, very serious matter. The Gideon man, look at what the Lord said to him. In the same Judges chapter 6, verse 12. And the angel of the Lord appeared to him and said unto him, The Lord is with thee, thou mighty man of valor. That was his position. He was a mighty man of valor. That's what he was created to be. But by position, he was in the wrong place. There was no way he would have become great on the foundation he was presenting to the Lord. He had to destroy that foundation. The same thing, Isa was a great prophet. Very great prophet indeed. But he sat in the palace of King Uzziah. And until King Uzziah died, he did not move. Paul was a great man of the gospel. In Acts chapter 9, when God appeared to him, he had to send him on three days dry fast to repair his foundation and to cause repair in his life so that the Almighty can build a lasting thing upon his life. It is high time we cry to the Almighty that, oh God, arise and repair my life for breakthrough. There are things the Lord wants to do in our lives. If you don't allow Him to do it, the greatness will be far. The Almighty has a workshop, like a mechanic workshop. Sometimes we drive our own vehicles into mechanic workshop and say, check this vehicle for me. Check this vehicle for me. And if you know that something is wrong with the vehicle, you take it to the mechanic, you expect the mechanic to check it up and say, oh, this is what is wrong. Check this vehicle for me. The time has come for all of us to drive the vehicles of our life into the repair workshop of the Almighty and ask Him to check our lives. Ask Him to check our motives. Why do you do what you do in church? Why is your spiritual life like this? It's good to ask ourselves these questions. How far have I really gone with God? Perhaps the whole of 2007 now the vehicle of your life has been moving very slowly. You need to now send it into God's workshop for repairs. We must deal with the seeds of sin in our heart. If we neglect these seeds that are breeding in our hearts, they will soon become weeds. But if we deal with the seeds, we shall not have any trouble with the weeds. 
If you don't deal with the seed and it becomes weeds, the weeds may graduate to become the forest. I want you to understand this very well. Immediately you surrender your life to Jesus and you claim to be born again. And if that experience is genuine, and then you become filled with the Holy Ghost, what happens is that you are invaded from above. You are invaded from above. Oh, what a wonderful time it was in those days. When you see an unbeliever who will come to church, he comes to the altar call of salvation, and he cries to the Lord, Lord, save my life, I'm a sinner. And as he cries to the Lord there as a sinner, all of a sudden he begins to cry again for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. He begins to cry for sanctification, cries for the baptism of the Holy Ghost. And in one single day, he gets all these spiritual experiences. Some people don't go that route. Some get born again. Then they will get the baptism of the Holy Ghost. Once that happens to you, you are invaded from above. It is an invasion. And if it is genuine, people around you will know that something has happened to you. They will know that something has happened to you. Because heaven cannot invade your life and you remain the same. But if you don't keep the fire of that invasion, and you don't keep on with that fire, a lot of damage will happen to your spiritual vehicles. Before God can repair our foundation, can repair our lives of breakthrough, many of us have things to settle with God. Are you really in good terms with God? Because God is not under any obligation to bless a rebellious child. But if you are in good terms with God, then you can face any situation without fear. Do you know that the greatest problem we have in the church is religious sinners? Religious sinners. Plenty of them in the house of God claim to be serving God, but they are living in sin. And they are polluting prayers, they are killing anointing, and they are quenching the power of God. Are you a religious sinner? You need a visit to divine workshop here tonight. If you read the Acts of Apostles, the secret of Acts of Apostles was simply the inflow, outflow, and overflow of the Holy Spirit. That's all. The inflow of it into their lives, the outflow of it as they began to minister, and the overflow of the Holy Spirit. No wonder. That songwriter says, those who fight and overcame, they're watching us from heaven. And they're saying with one accord, watch and pray. They just watching us. Say this one is fighting. Fighting with fornication. Fighting adultery. Fighting lying. Fighting gossiping. Fighting sleeping off when you should be doing spiritual exercise. And they wonder endlessly that these kind of people are coming to the same everywhere we are. Many of us are even trying to run away from God. But it is impossible to run from God, for God is everywhere. Many are saying, well, I don't want to become too serious with this matter. But I become too serious now. I don't know what will happen to my life. Jonah made that terrible mistake. He ran away from the Lord. And he got a mouth full of problems. Many church members are already addicted to television. Some even watch more television than read the Bible. Many problems that are afflicting men now. There is no science, no medicine that can cure it. I was with my friend some time ago in the University of Lagos at the College of Medicine. That my friend he was he's an expert at treating sexually transmitted diseases. He has been treating this young man for gonorrhea for about three months. He had tried all kinds of drugs for him, but no solution. And the young man kept troubling him. So I was there that day when he was shouting on his head. I said, Mr. Man, was I the one that sent you to be sleeping with you, man? I've tried my best. I tried this drug. It didn't work. I tried it didn't work. I tried this man. It didn't work. I tried that. Uh, that just, it didn't work. I, so please leave me alone. Don't come here again. The young man said, ah, if you say you want to to me, uh, he said he was going to kill himself. The man said that. <laughs> you better quickly do so. You better quickly do so. So in fact, he said there are many ways you can kill yourself. So you can either jump into the lagoon, you can say an ongoing vehicle jump at the front, or if you want your name in the newspaper, go and lie down when you see the dog or train coming. I was hearing this discussion all because of one word sin. That's all. That's what pushed the man there. Sin will pamper your body and then push you to a journey of no return. After it has escorted the person to a journey of no return, you will now smile and say, Bye. 
person is left with his own trouble all through life. So the problem that sins had caused, science cannot cure it. This is a very, very serious matter. Very serious matter. A very hard-working, spiritual, highly singing sister died in a church in South Africa. She died. By the time they would get to her room, what they found was she had a vibrator. The white man had constructed a machine with artificial male organ. And they put a battery inside. And that says, artificial male organ will be vibrating. That's what they found. The sister dipping into her under. Although she was dead, the machine was still vibrating when they got there. There yeah, was that beautiful singer. Now, she has vibrated herself into death. Many of us are like the proverbial spider. The proverbial spider trying to weave his web on the end of a moving clock. And it just starts cutting. We try and build our lives with our own brain outside the will of God. That's the life of so many of us. We need to get this foundation repaired. Many of us are like those boys who go to the football field. They were in a rush to go and play football at the football pitch. And they travel miles to get to this wonderful football pitch. Only for them to get to the football pitch and find that somebody has forgotten the ball at home. That's the spiritual life of so many people. We are trying to walk for God without inner deep repentance. Without inner deep repentance. That's why you find people come to church with no Bible. Some don't even know what is going on. They are trying to do the business of God that they do not know. After some have danced and danced and danced as chairman of this harvest, chairman of that harvest in a dead church, and they have distributed arrows into their body, they run to mountain of fire. Many sisters who were cheerleaders of ladies' good society, uh, uh, information, uh, beautiful women's society in their church, after they have gathered arrows inside their rapper, then they run here. Which is very, very sad. We need to send our vehicles to the workshop of the Almighty. Many have left their first love. And many are suffering from what we call spiritual paralysis. Everyone is just dumb, deaf. They don't hear anything. They don't see anything. And plenty of pastors have become diplomats and politicians instead of prophets. And many prophets have been demoted to the position of ceremonial priests. You need to find a way into the divine workshop. We have many who have become experts at organizing conferences, symposiums, seminars. But they themselves have never experienced a personal spiritual revival. Many are like that bird who made a deal with a fisherman. Say, Mr. Fisherman, anytime you give me a worm to eat, I will give you one of my feathers. He was giving his feather to the fisherman. He didn't know the feathers were finishing. Until one day, all the feathers were gone, and he had to run away from danger. He couldn't fly. Many are gambling with the devil. They gamble with the devil last year, seriously. Gambling with the devil is a one-way deal. Make up your mind, beloved. Perhaps there is no connection between what you do and here in church and what your life is outside here. There are different categories of people there, but when they go out there, they become different categories of people. And many so much lack music in their hearts, they have to carry it about in their pockets and attach it to their ears wherever they go. Many have forgotten that there is no substitute for victory. The only other alternative to victory is defeat. And many believers, unfortunately, they are already searching for a draw in their fight with the enemy. Many have stubborn trees to cut, but they are using a dull axe to cut it. Many have staring day by day as the staircase of power, but they have just failed to move up. And the Lord is saying, So move up so that I can bless you. So move up so that blessing will come to your life. But they refuse to move. Some who claim to be matured are only becoming principal in this spiritual mortuary. It is possible that your spiritual temperature is so low, it cannot even kill the spiritual germs that are around you. You need to drive your vehicle now, so early in this year, into the divine workshop of the Almighty. These are very, very serious matters. And I'm here so that I can tell you these things. As much as the promises of God for this year is so mind-blowing, if the foundation you are presenting before Him is not strong enough, you will not get it. It's like somebody says, Oh God, I want a car. I want a car. 
Another person is praying, I want a bar of soap. I want a bar of soap. I want a bar of soap. The person that is praying for a bar of soap, his own foundation, his own faith, is like a conveyor that carries soap. And if I've ever been to a factory, the conveyor that carries soap is different from the conveyor that carries small, small tablets. It's different from the conveyor that carries bottles of drinks. And they are all so low to the conveyor that carries vehicles. So, I want to take I want to take but the conveyor you are presenting is a conveyor that carries bar soap. And so God said, no, I can't give you this one. You are not able to carry this. I don't want to give you this one. And yet the person is crying to the Lord. Because something is wrong somewhere. I had a friend like that. I want a car, I want a car. Everywhere he walked, they refused to give it to him. Eventually, he made it a condition that if you want to give me this job, you don't give me a car, I will not take the job. The first time they, they, they now gave him a car, one driver of the public transport mower on the street just brushed him a little bit. He got so angry, he reversed his own vehicle and slammed it at the mower. So it's because of his anger. God knew what he wanted to do. God knew that this person who is praying for this car, by his foundation, if I give it to him the next day, he's going to drive it over the bridge and fall into the lagoon. Because his life is not really repaired to carry what he's looking for. I want your husband. I want your husband. Because, but I, I want to give you a husband. But this person said, I want a husband. Talks. 200 words, 300 words per minute and can run down abuse anybody. I want your husband, I want your husband. Ordinary rice, she cannot cook well. Those things she ought to repair, she's not repairing them. Wants to jump the gun. This is a serious situation. I want your wife, I want your wife. Here is a man who is still walking under the evil power of his father's house which is deep, knee deep in polygamy. He deep in polygamy. I want to wife, I want to wife. The result is what we see most of the time. But you see, God is a deep God. And He wants matured people. He wants to deal with people who are ready to get into what He wants them to get to. But these days now we have a lot of superficial Christian life. No depth at all. There is a desperate need of this hour, beloved. The desperate need is not a need for larger number of intelligent people. No. The Lord is not looking for a larger number of smart people. The Lord is not looking for a larger number of talented people. The Lord is not looking for a larger number of educated people. He's not looking for a larger number of gifted people. But he's looking for a larger number of people who are deep. Who are broken. Who can do things that he wants them to do. I want you to understand this, beloved. As far as our life is not repaired, there are many breakthroughs that we cannot have. And the first step towards you allowing God to repair your life is to understand that there is a problem and drive your vehicle yourself into this workshop. The Lord will not force you to repent. The Holy Spirit will not make it compulsive for you to change your life. It is a personal decision. That yes, I want to repair. I want my desire to die. I want the greatness that God has promised for me for this year to come upon my life. I want a foundation that can carry it. If you are crying, oh God, I want prosperity. Make me a multimillionaire. Make me a multimillionaire. But let's say, look at your pocket. There is a hole. There is a hole in this pocket. Fix that hole. Fix that hole. But he didn't fix it. So sometimes God in his own wisdom will not give that breakthrough. Because he knows you will lose it. And if you harass heaven too much, and say, okay, take. It will be wasted very quickly. These are very, very serious matters. Plenty of ministers have already received what we call ministerial leprosy. Gehazi did not understand why Elisha did not want to receive anything from Naaman. People have been coming and going to see prophet Elisha. And by Old Testament and New Testament standard, Really, you should not go to see a prophet with empty hand. So people do bring things to Elisha. Because Elisha has no salary from anywhere. People bring things there. And Gehazi knows that he collects them. And Gehazi used to, at least, either steal or take part of it. He was now surprised 
when this big man came with all these giant gifts. And Elisha did not even bother to come out to see who the man was. Rather, he just sent one derogatory and insulting message and said, You go and dip yourself into the vacuum and thou shalt be made whole. And the man went, came back, and he brought those gifts. Elisha said, No, take it away. Gaza now ran after them and collected. Immediately collected it. The leprosy that was in Jordan departed from Jordan and came upon the prophet. He now became a lepra minister. Ministerial leprosy came upon him. Unfortunately, the curse said, The leprosy of Naaman shall cleave unto thee and unto thy seed. Meaning that if somebody is an offspring of Gehazina, it will be a leper. Because that curse has been issued upon his life. A lot of ministers are like that now. Operating under ministerial leprosy. This is very, very sad. And this is very, very strange. When the minister of God faces a person after prayers, he says, I'll pray for you. Say to me now. And there's a problem. He is asking for ministerial leprosy. So she put in their foundation to be repaired if they can never be blessed as pastors. So the first step is to ag- you agree that there is a problem. Two is to drive your vehicle to that divine workshop. You do it yourself. Now say, Holy Spirit, come and do it for me. Holy Spirit, come and change me. No, you take a decision you want to change. Then the third thing is that you must deny yourself. In Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew chapter 16, verse 24. Matthew 16, 24. Then said Jesus unto his disciples, If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. If any man will come after me, let him deny himself and take up his cross and follow me. Then in Matthew 10.38 Matthew 10.38 And he that taketh not his cross and followeth after me is not worthy of me. Self-denial is one of the basic truths of the gospel. These two statements are very strong. Jesus defined those who can be and those who cannot be his disciples. Taking up your cross draws a line between those who qualify and those who do not qualify. Those who cannot be disciples are those who are not prepared to deny themselves. When your body says, drink, you start drinking. Talk, you start talking. Curse, you start cursing. Get angry, you start getting angry. Commit adultery, you go on. Fornicate, you go on. Then you are not in charge. Something else is in charge of your life. Beloved, when you take up your cross, where do you take the cross to? Is it to the marketplace? No. Is it to schools? No. Is it to parties? No. To weddings? No, sir. No, ma'am. Crosses are carried to the place of execution and suffering. As a believer who wants to be useful in the kingdom of God, you must take up your cross and follow the Lord. Deny yourself. Take up your cross. Follow the Lord. For you to key in into the ancient law of breakthrough and power. You must deny yourself. Deny yourself. Deny yourself means, number one, conform to his image. His image does not lie. His image does not steal. His image does not take things that do not belong to them. Conform to his image. Two, deny yourself means walk as Jesus walked. Where you know Jesus will not go, you don't go there. That's what it means to deny yourself. Deny yourself means lay aside every weight of sin. Lay them aside so that you don't become their servant. Deny yourself means do not live for yourself. Live unto God. Deny yourself means seek not after your own heart. Your heart may be saying something. Seek not after it. Seek not after it. Talent without Jesus will lead you to hellfire. Deny yourself means purge yourself. Purge yourself. 
Deny yourself means cast down every evil imagination in your heart. Deny yourself means you must decrease and Jesus must increase in your life. Deny yourself means you must not lay up treasures for yourself on earth. You must lay your treasures up in heaven. Deny yourself means that you must be truly born again. Truly born again. These days now, the word born again has been terribly abused. To be quite honest with you, majority of those who claim to be born again, not even know the meaning of the word being born again. The fact that they call you a bishop does not mean you are born again. The fact that they call you archbishop does not mean you are born again. The fact that they call you a general officer does not mean you are born again. The fact that you are a general superintendent does not mean you are born again. The fact that you call yourself president founder does not mean you are born again. The fact that you call yourself chorister or shouts does not mean you are born again. The fact that you went to Bible college and you studied some Bible knowledge, they gave you a certificate, does not mean you are born again. The fact that your father was a catechist or Anglican priest, does not mean you are born again. The fact that they gave you a Christian name, does not mean you are born again. Because you pray and your prayer gets answered, does not mean that you are born again. The name of Jesus is credit to what the any day. When they call his name, he will answer, but that doesn't mean he won't judge you later. Now, somebody coming to Mountain of Fire, the day they preach a message on polygamy, he ran away to another church where he said nobody teach, talks about those kind of things, so it's more comfortable there. Because he has just gone to drop the diary for the third wife. And now they are teaching against it here. So he ran to a place where nobody mentions heaven, nobody mentions uh, fornication, nobody mentions adultery, so that it's very comfortable there. He forgot the scripture, which says, Woe unto those who are at ease in Zion. When you are born again, there will be true repentance. You give up all willful sins. That's the first evidence of new birth. You give up all... That is, if you commit sin, it's a mistake. It's not that you planned it and you went and executed it. If you see anybody who is still willfully planning sin and going into it, he should be told without any command that he or she is not born again. This is a very serious matter. Very, very serious matter. Plenty of pastors who are far away from being born again. If you are born again, you will be thirsty to read the Bible. That is the second sign. You will be thirsty. Not that people who come to church with no Bible. They think that what to do is magic. Some will bring uh, New Testament and Psalm. They won't even learn how to open it. When I say foundational class, they are not interested. Membership class, they are not interested. Oh, let them pray so that I can get my visa. Let I me mean, get my visa and get out of this country. That's all he wants. When you are born again, there is a test for the word of God that even you yourself cannot explain. And the more you read that word, the more your life grows. When you are born again, there is a change in your attitude towards fellow men. Change in attitude towards fellow men. When you are truly born again. When you are born again, truly born again. You will attend a Bible teaching church. Where they teach you the Bible. Not just standing up and shouting and jumping about in one leg when you don't understand what they are saying. When you are truly born again, you don't just go to church to be entertained. Many of our churches are gradually becoming entertainment centers on Sundays. And this is very sad. Very, very sad. When you are born again, you find it easy to witness to others about Jesus. You talk to others. You are not ashamed. If your new birth is really genuine. When you are born again, all your thoughts will center on Jesus. Will center on Jesus. When you are born again. I'm not talking about your age in Christianity now. You are as old as Methuselah in the house of God, but, and you may not be born again. When you are born again, you no longer love the world. Don't love them. I will say love not the world. And that is things that are the world. You lose interest in their parties. Lose interest in their methods of doing things. Lose interest in the way they dress. If you are truly born again. The world. When you are born again, beloved, you will put away unsaved friends. Unsaved friends. How a born again sister can come and bring a man and say, this is the person I want to marry, but he's not a serious Christian yet. He's not a born again, and I want to marry. But he's a good man. No. 
is a child of the devil. Put away unsaved friends. When some people come and introduce people to myself, this is the person I want to marry, but it's not born again yet. Uh, he doesn't come to church yet. But I believe God, he will come. My answer is this. You yourself, you are not born again. Because if you are born again, you won't bring somebody who is not born again. So, no problem. You are a cockroach. It's a cockroach. The two cockroaches can marry each other. There's no problem. But once you got born again, light and darkness have no meeting spots. When you are born again, there will be a change in your prayer life. A change in your prayer life. When you are born again, fear of God will be in your heart. When you are born again, you will be selective in what you view on your television or what you listen to in your radio. It is when you do this that the repairer of destiny will agree for your vehicle to come into his workshop so that he can repair you. Tonight, we're not here for play. We're here for serious matters. Perhaps there were habits in your life last year that ensure that you are not in the free flow of God's blessing. You cannot continue like that this year. Perhaps the Almighty has been speaking to your heart about what you should do. But you are pushing it away, pushing it away, pushing it away. You can't continue like that this year. The blessings that God has for the righteous this year is completely mind-blowing. And I don't want anyone here to miss out on those blessings. It is still a sad conclusion that the wealth of the world is not in the hands of the children of God. We are not in charge now. Many born again Christians are still working for the children of their enemy, the devil. This is not an acceptable situation for everyone. But unfortunately, if we don't position ourselves properly, the blessings cannot come. When God says that greed is still in your heart, no matter how you pray, that certain things He won't give to you. When God says that anger is still in your heart, no matter how you pray, there are certain things He won't give to you. When God says that you yourself inside, you are a thief, there is no amount of prayer you pray that I will give these this, this things to you. This is a very, very serious matter. Very, very serious matter. There was one man who came to collect prayer points a long time ago. Before we were given that prayer point, many, many years ago, he was living in abject poverty. The poverty was so terrible. That the wife who had been struggling with him sometimes have to take his shirt and sew his shirt into pants to wear. She couldn't afford to buy underwear. This man started the prayers. And a week after the prayer, all of a sudden, a fan is name being announced on the radio that he had been made the commissioner of something in his state. He came, rolled on the floor, thank God. He went back. Very soon he began to change his coats. He had an official car and a driver. Then one woman today, one woman tomorrow, one woman today, one woman tomorrow, one woman today, one woman tomorrow. His wife was packed aside and he went on like this. He stopped coming to church completely. So his commissionership appointment was a curse instead of a blessing. Eventually one day, he was starting to somewhere, a trailer ran onto him and he died. Rise up on your feet. All eyes closed. For those who want to be sincere with the Almighty here tonight, it will be in your own interest to talk to the Lord. The Father, anything that stopped me last year, I don't want it to stop me this year. Therefore, I lay myself before you. Search me. Forgive me. I want a new beginning. Begin to talk to the Lord now. That's why you are here. You know what is going on in your heart. You know that your heart is not right. You know the evil thoughts there. Do you think the Almighty does not see you? Confess it to the Lord. Ask Him. Ask Him to, to help you. To help you. Yes, I live in vanity and pride. No, 
And my Lord was crucified. No, in not it was for me. He died on Calvary. My sin was great and grace was free. Power and there was multiplied to me. There I had so holy but he had come Tell the Lord those things that stopped me last year. I don't want it to stop me this year. Amen. The Lord said there is someone here. Your problem is alcohol. Alcohol. You still hide to drink. And this is what has been killing your prophetic anointing. It stole from you terribly last year. He stole from you terribly last year. God has his reason for banning all his prophets from drinking. Ban them from drinking. You cannot continue that kind of agenda and expect God to repair you. This is a serious matter. As a young lady also in this service, the Lord says so. You are actually below 20. But right now you are knee deep into fornication and sexual perversion. My fear is that you are closer to death than you think. Because already things have been programmed into your body that is troubling you now. And except you run to the Lord in prayer tonight, that may be your last chance. And if you remain there and say, well, I don't want people to know this kind of thing I've been doing. I'm shy. People will say, I'm a bad girl. Then okay to you, whatever happens to you. Your blood is not on anybody's neck. If you are that young lady, you better run straight to the altar and bear your knees. And if you are the one to in bondage to alcohol, you better run quickly to the altar and be on your knees now. All eyes closed. Everybody here will shout this now loud and clear. The Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. The Bible says in the year that King Uzziah died, I saw the Lord. There is an Uzziah that has to die in many lives tonight. So that you can see the Lord. There is an Uzziah that has to give way tonight. So that you can see the Lord. This is not a day to joke with Jesus. This is a day to cry out from your heart. You might not have this kind of opportunity again. It is when these foundational works have been cleared that your life can be prepared for maximum breakthrough. With a voice that nobody here can match. Because Isaiah is not a king that wants to die easily. I want you to shout this loud and clear. Power of Uzziah! In my life! Death! In the name of Jesus! Open your mouth and begin to kill that power. Something must happen in your life here tonight. That's why we are here. That's why we are here. Makapote sente yabo shente rabo kompo. Daribo sompo nakayaba. This is the first Wednesday meeting in the year. You cannot afford to come here and go home the same. In Jesus' name we pray. There is still a young lady below 20 that is supposed to join them here now. But right now you are knee deep into fornication and sexual perversion. Find a way to this altar very quickly. Things have already been planted into your body. And if you don't allow the Lord to heal you tonight, you may be writing a letter to termination. I'm holding on because of you before I round up here now. There's no point in being shy and you allow the enemy to kill you. I'm still waiting for that young lady. One more of them who ought to be here now. Everybody will shout this again loud and clear. We're not here to joke tonight. 
with all the force you can gather. Please, I beg you. The angels are around again. I don't want you to go home the same. Oh God, arise! I repair my life in the name of Jesus. Yes. Something must happen in your life tonight. You cannot afford for the enemy to waste you. Cannot afford for the enemy to waste you. Masi kapoya bo shendera bo kontera ba. They sent me Ali Katandaka. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Uh, uh, I wish you could see what the angel is doing now. Then you will pray harder, harder, harder. Because the more you are clearing your life, the more blessings they are loading inside. And the less aggressively you are doing it, the weaker the hands of those angels become. Can you now shout this again with power and with strength? Please, these are not prayers of joke. I'm not prayers to joke at Oh, this is where many people have missed it. And this is where many people have got into trouble. Every power! Every power. Can you shout that louder than that? Shout it again louder than that? Sending bitter water to my life. Can you shout this loud and clear? Is that the loudest you can shout this prayer? Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Louder, louder. Yes, yes, yes. Yes, 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 yes. Pata sata la kayaba. Reba kapo. Daka sempende kantayaba. Yes. Yes, yes. Mosi katanda kaya bo shenta. Daribo sepende kaya bo shenta raboka. Aha, 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 aha. Masenta kate. Tonight is tonight. Just, just, just. Yes, yes. Aha, 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 aha. Yes, 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 yes. Continue, continue, continue. In Jesus' name we pray. Aha. 
Those of you at the altar here, now with your own mouth, make a vow before the Lord that you will never go back into this kind of lives again. It is with your own mouth. Confession is made unto salvation. Make a solemn vow before the Lord. This is not a day to joke. This is the first meeting of the year. Aha. That's right. And if you are that young girl there, and you are 17 years old, find a way right to the front by this usher here. That's right. Aha. I need a pastor to lay hands on this girl. Father, I thank you for this, your children here. I pray, O oh Lord, that you will change their lives now. Every authority of darkness that has gathered to disgrace you, I command them to be shaken up from your life in the name of Jesus. Beginning from today, you will no longer incur the anger of God. And the vow you have made today shall be permanent in your life. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Any agenda of the enemy to kill you, let the agenda be destroyed. In Jesus' mighty name we pray. You may go back to your seat rejoicing now. These seven prayers I want you to pray. It's for those who want something special in this particular year. We have few minutes to pray them. Every enemy of my favor this year. Scatter in the name of Jesus. Yes. Any power that doesn't want me to have favor this year. Command them to scatter. In Jesus name we pray. Uh, somebody over there if you pray this prayer well the countries the Lord will make you to visit and benefit from this year will be so many can you shout this loud and cry everybody shout it with holy anger anointing for correct positioning fall upon my Lord in the name of Jesus for correct positioning. Correct positioning. Fall upon my life. Masikayabo Shenderabo Konterabo Santa. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. To every power that stopped my ancestors. And is now pursuing me. Can I hear you saying this loud and cry? Yeah! In the name of Jesus. Whatever stop my senses is now pursuing me. Their time is up. Aha, 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 aha. In Jesus' name we pray. Say so this year, my Lazarus, come alive in the name of Jesus. That's right. Yes. In Jesus' name we pray. Fresh oil from heaven. Don't bat my head. In the name of Jesus, fresh oil from heaven, bombard my head. In 
Jesus' name we pray. This year, opportunity wasters. In the name of Jesus. Ah, 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 ah. Just, 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 ah, ah. In Jesus, then we pray. Uh-huh. So this year, I receive power to divide my Red Sea. Can you say that loud and clear? In the name of Jesus, divide your Red Sea. Yes. Yes, 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 yes. 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 Amen. If you are that fellow here, you stole something from somebody many years ago. Unfortunately, you cannot return the thing because the person is dead. That thing is what is troubling your breakthrough. Find a way to this altar very quickly from wherever you are. You stole something. Even if you say return, the person is dead. Find a way to this altar and be on your knees now. That thing you have stolen is troubling your destiny seriously. Now, begin to prophesy into the womb of this year what you want out of this year. Thank you, Jesus. 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 Amen. Father, thank you for this, your children here. I ask for forgiveness by the power in the blood of Jesus. This thing that is a voice that is not speaking against you, by the power in the blood of Jesus, I make atonement for that voice speaking against your life as from today by the atonement power in the blood of Jesus this operation is cancelled beginning from now that which the enemy has used to tie you down is broken to pieces thank you every father in Jesus mighty name we pray you may go back to your seat rejoice but and a big but you better lie to us in case these are things we ought to take away from you that we ask you to bring back to church write and say this is what it is and put your correct name there raise up your right hand to the heavens and say my hands become a battle axe in the name of Jesus say three times A loud amen. Let us share the grace in fellowship.